Hello everyone, welcome back to the new video. So in this video, we'll be going through this paper, which is titled as an unsupervised multi-document summarization framework based on neural document model. This came out from Peking University, Beijing, China in the year of 2016 and got published at ACL. So let's read this paper. So before that, I just want to say, if you like such content, do share it with your friends and make sure you hit the subscribe button for future videos. Okay. Extractive methods simply treat the document as a set of group of sentences while ignoring the global semantics of the document. Okay, so what they're saying is extractive methods usually consider sentence as the lexical unit and work just over the sentences and ignore the global semantics in which the sentence usually occurs. Meanwhile, neural document model is effective on representing semantic content of documents in low dimensional vector. Okay, so it looks like neural document model is nothing but an encoder in which you give a document and it gives a low dimensional vector representation for that document. In this paper, we propose a document level reconstruction framework called Doc Rebuild, which reconstruct the document with summary sentences through a neural document model and selects the summary sentences to minimize the reconstruction error. Okay, so what they're saying is they are proposing a document level reconstruction framework, which they call as Doc Rebuild that tries to reconstruct a document D with summary sentences through neural document model and selects the summary sentences to minimize the reconstruction error. Okay, so let's consider you have a document D, you pass it through a neural document model and you get a vector representation VD. And let's say the document had 100 sentences of which now if you pull out 10 sentences, if there was some upper limit to this should be the length of the summary. So let's say you pull out 10 sentences, you pass them through the neural document model and you get VS, which is the representation for all the 10 sentences when averaged. So they are proposing a technique that chooses these sentences really carefully. So once you have those sentences, you get a representation of the sentence or the summaries and you already have a representation for the entire document. Then you calculate the reconstruction error between these two vectors which could be as simple as doing an Euclidean distance between the vectors and you try to push this loss towards zero as close as possible, which intuitively would mean the summary sentences that you have chosen are very much representative of the entire document because the vector representation is very close. So that is the full idea what they propose. They apply two strategies, sentence filtering and beam search to improve their performance. And they claim to outperform the current state of the art unsupervised algorithms for doing a multi-document summarization. Okay, let's read further. So this is the framework that they propose. So let's say you have n documents. They have named it as D1 to Dn. So this is the multi-document set that you have. You calculate the embedding vector for each of the document D and then you average all the embeddings to get an average vector representation for all the documents that you have in the input. So this is one flow that you calculate. On the other side, you have a system that does sentence filtering using which you calculate your candidate set, which is candidate sentences essentially. And once you have that, you have a mechanism to select some sentences from those candidate set to calculate a summary set. You concatenate all the sentences from that set and you have your summary in place. You again apply the document model, which is essentially you apply a vectorization technique and get a vector representation for that summary. So this is VS, what I was talking about, and this is VD. Now you calculate some kind of reconstruction error, how close each of these vectors are. And once you have that score, let's call it S. You again go back and choose the sentences in this set so that VS and VD are close enough and your S is as close to zero as possible. So this is the full idea. Now let's go through and see the details to how do they do a sentence filtering and how do they select the sentences and what kind of document model do they use? Okay. Neural document model aims to represent a semantic content of a document with low dimensional vector representation. Here we focus on unsupervised methods and exploit two kinds of unsupervised document models, bag of words model and paragraph vector model. So this is exactly what we have already discussed. Neural document model is nothing but a system that kind of converts every document to a low dimensional vector representation. They play around with two unsupervised techniques. First is the bag of words model 
another is the paragraph vector in bag of words model we simply use a bag of words of document without considering the original order or relationship between the neighboring words okay then they talk about word embeddings so we represent each word by its corresponding word embedding and the document is represented by the weighted average of all the words in the document okay so this is a pretty classical technique how you represent every sentence in a vector format you start off with some pre trained vectors let's say glove or word to weight which have a word and its vector representation stored in a csv file for every word in a sentence you do a lookup from that file then you average across the number of words that you have in a sentence to get a final vector representation of the entire sentence so this is the bag of words model that they talk about so here as they mention it has its own weaknesses it is likely to lose the semantic information hidden in the order now since you are doing the average across all the words that you have so the order in which the word occur in that sentence doesn't matter because at the end you will be getting the same average vector representation so that is one huge drawback of such technique so to tackle that they introduce a more complex model that takes word order into consideration which is nothing but paragraph vectors so they say figure 2 illustrates the framework for the pv model so let's see the figure so this is the framework for the paragraph vectors model it has a similar idea of that one of mikolov they are mentioning about the word to wick model where one of the algorithms that mikolov proposed was you given the context and try to predict the center word here in this pv model the additional modification is an extra input which is the document vector so here you are trying to predict the center word for every context window that is of k length by inputting all the words in that context along with the document vector so this will essentially force to learn a vector representation for every word that is not only capturing the semantics within a window but is also conditioned on the overall semantics of the entire document so that's what they have written the objective here as we know is to maximize the log likelihood which is given by this equation which is nothing but you try to maximize the classification probability of every word from its window and also the document and you apply a summation across all the words that you want to predict across multiple windows which is what you want to maximize note that wt minus k to wt plus k represent the sequence of words from this to this except the word wt the probability p of wt given all of this is defined using softmax which is given by its regular format where numerator is the probability of that word and denominator is summation across entire vocabulary so that you get a normalized version between 0 and 1 okay and here they define y which is the numerator in the softmax as the output from the linear transformation so here u and b also are the learned parameters where u and b are the parameters of the softmax classifier which is essentially the linear layer on top of that you will have the softmax so the parameters of the linear layer are u and b and x stands for averaging of the document vector and word vectors extracted from d and w so d and w if you can recall d is the matrix that holds every document narrow vector representation of the length l and similarly w is the matrix at word level that holds word and a vector representation of the length l so you have a network that takes in all the words and a document d in one hot encoded format when multiplied with their respective matrices which are d and w gets a dense vector representation of each of the words and input document d so when you average that that is the h what they are saying and this goes to a linear layer where you get y which you plug it into softmax to get the classification probability so if you see the more accurate this average is the more accurate this y would be the more accurate this y is the more probability will be given to that classification and for this input to have a good average you would require to have a good vector representation of each of the words and a document d so this is the entire idea so if you see the training parameters are nothing but capital d capital w u and b and you train all these four matrices using sjd okay so this is the entire flow of what document model means moving forward to objective functions so they say we denote multi document set capital d with all these n documents and all the documents d are processed into group of sentences defined by candidate set so let's say you have n number of documents which constitute a set and you call it as capital d and once you have all the sentences across all the document you call it as candidate set which you represent as this so let's say you have n sentences 
the sentences selected from S form a summary set which you denote as capital S. So capital S has L sentences which is nothing but a subset from capital C set and where the number of sentences in S is very very less than number of sentences that we have in total across all the documents. They define the parameter theta that denotes the required summary length which means your L is bounded by theta as the upper limit. We consider the multi-document summarization task as the data reconstruction problem. We assume that a good multi-document summary is supposed to reconstruct the main content of the document set. Therefore, we focus on two issues. How to represent the main content of the document set and how to use the summary set to reconstruct the main content. Okay. So as you can see in this diagram, they have tried to visualize the document vectors and the summary vectors. Document vectors are represented by circles and summary vectors are represented by cross. We can clearly see an overlap between the space where summary as well as the document reside, which gives us an idea of how correct a document model is. Okay. So this is a reconstruction error that they talk about. So if you notice, this is nothing but a squared error between the vector representation of the summary sentences, which they represent by S star. And DM is the document model, which is the paragraph vector representation, which we have just seen. And this term, what you see over here, is nothing but the average vector representation of each of the document DI. So you want in set S star such that you minimize the distance between both the vectors. And the length of the summary is upper bounded by theta, which acts as a hyperparameter. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, so talking about sentence selection. Our task is essentially to find the optimal set of sentences that minimize the equation 4. So this is the same equation what we just saw. A simple approximate approach is to select sentences sequentially from candidate set with a greedy algorithm. Here we introduce two strategies in sentence selection stage to guarantee both efficiency and effectiveness. Okay, so the greedy algorithm that we talk about is in this diagram if you see the way you make the summary set from candidate set this is a step that they talk about as a greedy selection step. So let's say the candidate set has 100 sentences. So you start picking every sentence in a sequential order and that becomes your summary after you concatenate it. And post that you do the reconstruction error. And now they will talk about how do they do the sentence filtering step. Okay, so talking about sentence filtering, authors mentioned that they have used a baseline method to rank sentences first and then reserve a subset of top rank sentences as candidates. There are many techniques that essentially talk about doing the same thing. One of the prominent one what people usually use in the baselines is text rank that uses graph based algorithm to rank every sentence in that graph and post that you can arrange them in descending order and select the top K sentences as the possible sentences in your candidates. So once you have generated the candidate set Authors talk about two techniques to how do you generate summary set. One of the things that we have discussed earlier was the greedy algorithm. You go around and select sentences greedily from that set. That is one way. The other technique that author talk about is the beam search. So beam search is a very common technique that people usually use in natural language generation while decoding sequence on the decoder end. So I'll not go through the algorithm, but I'll let you know the basic details. There is a parameter that you define, which, which is K, which is also known as beam size. This is the parameter that defines at every step how many possible candidates do you want to evaluate. So for example, if we were to generate certain sequence, at every decoder step, I would sample K words if we were generating sequence at word level. So at T is equal to 1, I generate 3 steps or 3 words. So this could be top 3 words. And again, if I were to go towards this path, what are the next three words I would have selected? So this chain keeps on growing. You kind of bifurcate by three childs at every node. And at last, when the stopping condition is met, you calculate the likelihood of every path. So you'll be having some L1 for this path, L2 for this path, L3 for this path. And the final output that you generate as the output sequence is the one that has the maximum likelihood. So this is the basic idea behind beam search. So in this paper, they apply it at sentence level. So at every sentence, the next sentence you choose, you will have three possibilities or K possibilities based on the parameter that you tune in. And that way you kind of expand your sequence length or the summary length till theta is reached, which is the stop limit or the end limit that they have set for this summary sequence. Okay. So now they have the experiments. 
so i guess we are done with the paper now so i hope it was a fun read for you as well as it was for me if you like such content do make sure you share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel i'll meet you in the next video bye bye